There's nothing the political press loves more than a good soap opera, especially one the New York Times describes as involving questions of political ambition, jealousy, resentment, and loyalty. I'm talking here, of course, about the flap about Nikki Haley. And it is a kind of a communications breakdown, and it is fascinating for those of us uh, who cover Washington. Uh, but I think the focus on personalities may be missing the larger point, at least in part. So here's what happened. Nikki Haley, UN ambassador, goes on Face the Nation on Sunday. That's part of her job. She really is sort of the top foreign policy uh, spokeswoman for the administration right now, since no secretary of state has been confirmed. And remember, on Friday were the airstrikes against Syria. On Sunday morning, the question was, would there be further U.S. sanctions against Moscow? And Haley goes on and says, yeah, further sanctions are coming. In fact, they're going to be announced tomorrow. Well, they weren't. And uh, the White House had to explain why. So Larry Kudlow, who's the new uh, chief economic advisor, is talking to reporters. And he says, well, you know, Nikki Haley's doing a great job. But she got ahead of the curve. And there may have been some momentary confusion there. And that prompted a lot of pundits to say, aha, the administration is throwing Nikki under the bus. What's going on here? And the ambassador, let's just say she didn't take that lightly. Uh, she gave a statement to Fox's Dana Perino, which she said, with all due respect, I don't get confused. So this, of course, was considered very delicious, and that's why there were all these front page stories about it. Uh, Kudlow, who really was just trying to smooth things over, uh, called Haley to apologize. He told the New York Times uh, that, um, you know, he, he had, in fact, said he was sorry and that it, he was totally wrong to call her confused. The policy changed, and she wasn't told about it, says Larry, so she was in a box. And that's exactly what happened. Now, uh, is this an extraordinary rebuke of the White House by Nikki Haley, as the Washington Post puts it? Uh, is it a remarkable display of discord, as the New York Times says? What it really is, is the latest example of the Trump administration not firing on all cylinders. It just seems like the normal vetting process that goes on you don't send your U.N. ambassador out to do a Sunday show knowing that she's going to be asked, of course, about uh, U.N. sanctions, excuse me, U.S. sanctions against Moscow without being very uh, careful in what she's going to say. She wasn't freelancing. She wasn't spouting her opinion. She wasn't being more hawkish on Russia uh, than President Trump, although that may be uh, how she is generally. She was following the guidance, as, as we call it here inside the Beltway, the talking points that she was given. But nobody told her that either the, the decision wasn't final on the president's part uh, or that it was in flux or that there weren't going to be any more sanctions. So it's an embarrassment for the administration. Uh, the at Times piece says that the president grew angry watching her on CBS. Uh, but what it really says is, you know, this is an administration that has to tighten things up. Now, sometimes this is because the president changes his mind on the fly or excludes certain people. So, for example, uh, the secret about uh, uh, Mike Pompeo, the CIA director, the, probably the incoming secretary of state, secretly meeting with Kim Jong-un, uh, that is a diplomatic breakthrough, or we'll see if there is one, that the administration pulled off until the Washington Post found out about it on Tuesday night. Uh, but it's also a reminder that Trump himself announced that he wanted to meet with the North Korean dictator without telling his then Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson, who he also had rebuked on Twitter uh, for talking about diplomacy uh, with uh, Little Rocket Man, as the president was then calling the leader of North Korea. But this doesn't seem to be one of those instances in which there's uh, somebody was deliberately cut out or was a clash of views. Uh, it seemed to be an old-fashioned screw-up. Now, obviously, that's newsworthy, but I think it's more important in terms of unraveling the way in which this administration makes foreign policy to deal with it uh, as a matter in which the White House just doesn't seem at times to have its act together rather than some, you know, everybody, you know, you get these pundits, they threw Nikki Haley under the bus. Well, maybe uh, they did inadvertently or even with a little bit of uh, purpose after the screw up that have somebody to blame. So some pointed the finger at Nikki Haley. It wasn't her fault. It wasn't Larry Kudlow's fault. It is perhaps the fault of a White House that just seems sometimes to fall a bit short when it comes to